Hey, beautiful people of the... Oh! Hey, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Ryan, and today's short story Saturday video is going to be on A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor. I would be willing to argue that you could craft an entire college course on three short stories. Good Country People, A Good Man is Hard to Find, and Everything That Rises Must Converge all by the goddess herself, Flannery O'Connor. Just a quick reminder before we get started, down in the description below is a link to this short story if you haven't read it yet, as well as a link to the next short story that we're going to be reading, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. A Good Man is Hard to Find was published in 1953 and also as part of the collection of the same name, and it's also been anthologized in almost every single classic short story anthology since then. The story starts with a grandmother, her son, who is named Bailey, as well as his wife, and then their two kids, John Wesley and June Starr. It's a family about to go on a family road trip, and this road trip is going to go badly. Spoiler alert! We start with a very normal situation. A family road trip, except the grandmother doesn't want to go, and here is what she says to her son Bailey. Now see here, read this. She holds up the paper. Here this fellow that calls himself the misfit is a loose from the federal pen and headed toward Florida, and you read here what it says he did to these people. Just you read it. I wouldn't take my children in any direction with a criminal like that a loose in it. I couldn't answer to my conscience if I did." And there you have it. At the very end of the very first paragraph, Flannery O'Connor lays out the stakes for the story. In that quote, the grandmother names what her greatest fear is, and then the story proceeds to take us face to face with that fear. As we know, the story starts on this very normal ground, but it quickly goes towards the abnormal. There's a car crash, a shooting a serial killer. What more could you ask for from a story? The grandmother's fears come true to a degree. She meets the misfit, but the misfit was not exactly what she expected. You see, there's this conversation that happens in the middle of the story, which doesn't seem too important at the time, but by the time you get to the end, you realize it's very important, where the family stops at a diner, and they meet Red Sammy, the owner of the diner, and the grandmother says to Red Sammy, it isn't a soul in this green world of gods that you can trust. And Red Sammy says back, a good man is hard to find. Everything is getting terrible. I remember the day you could go off and leave your screen door unlatched. Not no more. And that conversation. That right there. That is the reason that I think that this short story is, at the very least, great. And probably more like brilliant. This is a story that gets right to the heart of the matter between good and evil. The grandmother is this old person who has been raised, she's had her entire life to decide who is good people and who isn't. She was raised in the South, which is traditionally pretty famous for their very strong opinions about good and evil, with some major complications like slavery. The grandmother, as it turns out, misses the good old days of plantations. This entire story has to do with the dilemma that the grandmother has deep down about whether or not the world is still a good one, about whether or not people are still good people. The car crash happens because the grandmother wants to go see a plantation that she remembers from her childhood. That has a complicated history. The shooting happens because this is the ultimate version of the grandmother's debate with herself. Are people still good people? And then, the final conversation with the misfit. The grandmother is looking evil straight in the eye. The misfit is obviously a criminal. And yet he was also a choir boy. To me, the most possible important thing about Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find is that this entire story, from the very first paragraph to the very last lines, is microcosmic example of the grandmother's character. Everything that happens, happens because of who she is in direct relation to her greatest fear. It's kind of brilliant, really, how this story starts off with a phrase that we hear bandied about in conversation every single day, which is that there aren't any good people left. The world is different. It's not quite as good as it once was. And Flannery O'Connor starts there and gets to an incredible dramatic action, a full dramatic arc. Edgar Allan Poe, who we're actually going to talk about here in a few weeks, uh, is often cited with the kind of first definition of a short story, that a short story should have a unity of effect. It should leave you feeling one thing. Everything in the story is pointed one direction. Flannery O'Connor, at least in my mind, argues that the short story should do that, plus one extra thing. The short story should be the direct embodiment of one character's character flaw. The entire thing should spawn from a character trait that a character has. The entire short story should spawn from the grandmother's single idea that these days it's pretty hard to find a good man. 
I would absolutely love to hear what you guys thought of this short story. If you've read it for class or if you've read it for pleasure, again, the link is down below so you can read it now and tell me what you think of it. These short story videos are great because even just filming them, I get excited about the power of what words can do when they're pointed in one direction. That is all that I personally wanted to say about the short story. Obviously, there's so much more to say, and I look forward to continuing that conversation down in the comments. But for now, that is going to be all. Our next short story Saturday video is going to be How to Date a Brown Girl, Black Girl, White Girl, or Happy by Gino Diaz. I cannot wait to talk about this story. I hope that a lot of you guys have already read it but I'll put the link to that one down below as well. That said, I will also hopefully have a video for you guys on Monday. So thanks for coming to hang out with me again. I've enjoyed this and I hope you have too. Best wishes. Hey, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Ryan and let's hit the ground running with this first short story Saturday. We are gonna be reading Sunny's Blues by James Baldwin, first published in 1957 and then later collected in Going to Meet the Man. There was a pistol shot from the woods, followed closely by another. Then silence. The old lady's head jerked around. She could hear the wind move through the treetops like a long, satisfied in-suck of breath. Bailey boy, she called. 